All right, welcome everyone to the new SEO formula for window treatment and awning companies. How's everybody doing today? Uh, well, today we're gonna go through uh, the new formula, what's changed, uh, what is different in the world of uh, SEO. This is all part of what we call our digital dominance method, uh, which includes obviously a bunch of pieces that you can see here. Uh, but uh, the, the biggest piece is he here is piece number one, SEO having your search engine optimization in place, which includes a lot of different pieces, of course, uh, but having those pieces in place is the best strategy uh, towards moving to dominating uh, the digital uh, footprint that you have in your specific area. So uh, while, you're, while you're getting ready, go ahead, turn your phones off uh, or mute your phone, I guess. Uh, turn off Facebook, don't look at too many cat pictures. And uh, if you're a, a window treatment or an awning business that wants to really kind of grow your business online, uh, the next 45 minutes are gonna be great today. So what we're going to cover, and I wanna make this interactive for sure, uh, but what we're going to cover uh, is some of the latest updates to the Google algorithm. Things that maybe you've put in place in the past that may be hurting you now uh, Google's always changing things and updating things. Uh, so there's always, uh, there's always different things I'm going on there. Uh, also, how to optimize your website using the new SEO formula. Uh, and you know, we'll cover a couple other things beyond that. Uh, as far as who I am, uh, I'm Will Hankey. I'm the author of a book called Triple Your Window Treatment and Awning Leads. Uh, I've been teaching and doing SEO digital marketing for over 24 years now. And uh, it is something I really love uh, with a passion. Uh, I am an active member of the WCAA and the uh, CHDN, which is the Custom Home Decor Network. Uh, we're, we're a partner with uh, Window Fashion Vision Magazine. A lot of you might know them uh, and also Window Coverings University. So, you know, we've been doing this for quite a while. We have a lot of clients in the window fashion uh, awning area. And, uh, and that really is our specialty. Uh, I've worked with my daughter, Amber. Uh, for some of you probably have met her in the past. She is our lead web developer. Uh, and like I said, we've been doing this for 24 years now. We're a family owned and a veteran owned company. We're also Google partners uh, for the pay pay-per-click portion. Now, I am gonna give away some free stuff at the end if you hang around. Uh, I've got a couple of freebies that I wanna make sure I give out. And also I wanna make this an interactive event. So if I'm covering something and you have some questions, uh, you'll see that this is kind of a workshop style or a Zoom meeting style versus just a lecture. So if there's a question you have, please just unmute yourself and, uh, and ask the question. And uh, I'll, be, I'll do my best to answer that uh, along the way so that everybody's clear on everything that we're talking about today. That sound good? Also, there is a chat area, uh, and let me open that up and make sure I'm watching that as well. If anybody does want to doesn't want to unmute but wants to ask a question, there is a chat area uh, in Zoom as well. So, does does did somebody have a question? No, I don't know. Are you asking a question? No. <laughs> okay. All right. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, so does SEO still matter? Is it still something that is important? Uh, well, yeah, the easy answer is obviously yes. 71% of clicks for local related searches go really to two different areas. The what we call the Google three pack or the Google map pack. Uh, this has changed many times over the years. Uh, but this area is driving a lot of clicks. And then the first three or four, what we call organic spots in Google. Between those two, that is about 71% of all the clicks in any particular search. Now, the rest of the clicks might go further down the page, which is a pretty small amount. Uh, also, for some searches, there are pay-per-click ads, which sometimes work well, sometimes don't. A lot of people are getting what we call banner blindness uh, to those, and, and uh, they're just skipping right past the ads, going straight to the map or the organic listings now. Pretty interesting. Uh, but 71% of the clicks go to those two areas. Now, another thing I wanted to do was actually pull up a keyword explorer tool and show you exactly 
uh, what is going on when it comes to some of the different searches that could be out there. So this is a tool that I have called Ahrefs. And what this tool lets me do is put in a phrase and then get information from these different sources about that particular phrase. So let's start with window treatments. I'll just put that in. And a couple things pop up. First of all, volume is searches in a 30 day period. So 40,000 searches in Google for this phrase in 30 days. So that's a huge amount of traffic uh, every 30 days that for people that are typing this in. Now, one really cool thing that I can do is I can click on this parent topic, which is window shades. If I click on that, it actually tells me other words that people are also typing in because, hey, everybody's not gonna type in window treatments, right? Some people might type in window blinds, window shades, window treatments, window coverings. And if you look at the volumes over here of these different phrases, and we're probably hitting 200,000 searches per month and you know, in just the first five or six keywords. So there is a ton of potential traffic out there. Uh, and this is, there's 801 different keywords that people could type in related to window treatments uh, that could send traffic to your website. Now, if we went back and did awnings, we're gonna see something very similar. 30,000 searches per month. The parent topic is awning without the S, uh, but again, um, a lot of different keywords that people could potentially type in. Not everybody's just gonna type in awning. Some people are gonna type in sunsetter because they know the brand or they see the ads or they're gonna type in window awning, door awning, awning, awning company near me, right? A lot of these different phrases. Now we're again, well over a hundred thousand searches in, a, in just a 30 day period as well. So, you know, plenty of traffic out there for a lot of different keywords. And I'm only looking at Google in this particular instance, but we've also got to consider other uh, websites like Bing, Yahoo, uh, uh, and then the number two search engine in the US, which is actually YouTube. So YouTube, which is a Google property, is actually the number two search engine, especially skewing towards a younger demographic, so 40 and under. Uh, a lot of times they'll use YouTube as their search instead of Google, which kind of surprises me, but definitely worth paying attention to Google if you're not at this time. All right, let me get back to my slides here. Any questions about the, the keywords that I, that I put in there? Any questions around that? All right. So easy answer, yes, SEO still matters. Uh, also, I took some screenshots of uh, some analytics programs that I have of a couple different clients and I, I've, uh, blurred out the client so you can't see who it is, but this is traffic by source. So uh, of all the traffic that is coming to a specific website, uh, this is the different sources that, that um, they're, they have. So in this case, for this website, their number one source is Google organic traffic with 26% of all their traffic. Then we have direct slash none. So direct slash none is kind of uh, ambiguous, right? It's traffic that was not given a specific uh, referrer code. So it did Google, when the person landed on the website, they didn't tell Google where they came from, right? So Google just calls that direct or none. It, they didn't have the answer to where that traffic came from. Not unusual to see those. This would also apply to if you've bookmarked your website and you go to your bookmark and pull up your website that way, there is no referrer to your website. You came directly there, right? So that would be another piece of that. Third one here we see is m.facebook. So that's mobile uh, traffic from Facebook, specifically mobile traffic. Uh, and then in this customer's case, they are running some cost per click ads or pay-per-click ads. Uh, and this customer is also running some ads on TV on Spectrum, it looks like. Here's another one, 61% of their traffic comes from Google. Now, what's interesting here is in the fourth spot is Bing, which is another search engine, but check out the difference. 3.5% of their traffic comes from Bing compared to 61% of their traffic, which comes from Google. 
Another client, similar, smaller numbers, but still 46% of their traffic is coming from Google organic. So I think it's pretty obvious that you can't just rely on pay-per-click ads. And listen, Google's really good at giving out those promotional codes to get people to sign up and, and run some ads. Uh, but if, as soon as you turn those ads off, you disappear. So having a smart SEO strategy is really going to help your business in the long term. So let's talk about the three biggest changes that have happened uh, when it comes to Google. Number one, you can no longer get away with duplicate content. And we're going to go into each of these in a little bit of detail. Uh, low quality links pointing back to your website can hurt you. And you need a real physical office in order to rank well in the Google Maps area. And we're seeing uh, in some cases that Google Maps is outperforming uh organic search now. A lot of people, especially mobile users, which is 60 to 70% of all users now that are searching are making their decision from the Google three pack, the Google map area. So if your business is not listed there, if it's not optimized for that, and you're not getting active reviews for your website, that's a big miss. That's a big swing and miss there uh, that could really drive a lot of traffic your, to your site or to your business. Um, so there's a couple things that haven't changed that I'll go into first. Number one, content is still king and it has been for 20 years now. Uh, there is nothing better that you can do than create content on a regular basis. Now that could be a lot of different things and we actually went into content a lot in uh, the last training session we had. Um, but this is all around building things that every time Google comes to your website, your website is getting bigger, whether that's a new blog that's on there, uh, you've added some videos, uh, you've added an infographic, a podcast, all kinds of different ways that you can create content. Uh, but by far, content is still king and it is still driving uh, the most uh, relevant stuff, the most relevant, relevant traffic to your site. Also mobile slash responsiveness. So if your site is not mobile friendly, uh, this, is a, this is a big one. Uh, the easiest way to figure out if your site is mobile friendly is just to go to Google and type in mobile friendly test. Uh, mobile friendly test. And Google actually has a free tool that you can just plug your website right in here and run the test. Uh, so you can do that straight from Google, but they will come back and give you, uh, yes, your site is mobile friendly. No, it's not mobile friendly. And mobile friendly really means a couple things. Obviously it means it works on a phone, but it also means that it works on a phone depending on which way your screen is, uh, depending on if you're on a notepad, uh, or sorry, a notebook or a laptop or a desktop. So every one of those has a different size screen. Every one of those has a different potential way that it could show, your website could show up. So having a site that's responsive and, uh, works for all of the different configurations is very important. As I mentioned earlier, pay-per-click is very expensive. This is not a great strategy and it is growing in the cost per click. So clicks are getting more expensive, which means leads are getting more expensive. And again, as soon as you turn that off or, or you run out of budget for the month, you know, you're gone. You're nowhere to be found. That means no more leads until the next month when the budget kicks back in. Uh, but we're seeing a big increase in the cost per click here uh, over time. And one last thing that I wanted to mention is you can't spam Google. You can't really trick Google anymore. Years ago, you could put white text of all the locations that you, all the cities that you worked in, in, you know, on a, on a white background and hide that text from humans uh, and still trick Google. Those things are long gone. So there's really not any way to trick Google anymore. They're super smart with how they understand how things work. And this is kind of a, um, a symbol or a symbolism of what they call their knowledge graph. So Google has built this database where it understands relationships between words. So if you typed in, in this case, Mona Lisa, it understands that you know other things you might be interested in is Da Vinci or the Louvre or Paris or the Eiffel Tower or a specific date. Uh, a lot of different ways that they understand how all these different words 
work together. This is called the knowledge graph. It's very interesting. So writing, uh, writing really good content, back to talking about content, writing really good content can ultimately help you increase your sure. ranking for other terms that maybe or maybe not related to uh, what you're actually writing about, which is very interesting. So let's talk about the three biggest changes. Uh, Lucy, did you have a question? No, I'm making okay. notes, thank you. Okay, no problem, sorry. That's okay. All right, uh, so let's talk about the three biggest changes. And these three biggest changes are related to three updates that Google came out with. They, so they come out with updates every day, but they don't tell us what those updates are. But when they have a major update, uh, the search community, like myself, we tend to name these different updates so that we can refer to them easily. Uh, in this case, we're gonna be talking about three of those updates, which is the uh, panda update, the penguin update, and the pigeon update. <laughs> kind of interesting, they all start with P, not on purpose, uh, but those are the, the three big ones. And they are related to the three things I mentioned earlier. You can no longer get away with duplicate content, these low quality links can be hurting your website uh, and having a, a real physical office uh, will help you rank in the Google Maps area. So when we talk about duplicate content, what we're really talking about is uh, putting content maybe that you're getting from other sources or you're copying and pasting a, a great article and putting that on your website. That can really hurt your website. Uh, most window treatment and awning companies serve around a 25 to 50 mile radius with a lot of cities, you know, and municipalities in between there. And what used to happen in a lot of cases is web developers would write a page of content and put that page up on your site. And then they would copy and paste that and change the city name and do that for 50 different city or municipalities near you, right? Uh, that can really hurt you. And this is just one kind of uh, way that duplicate content was created. Google's smart enough to know that this content is just changing one word every time. And they're not really going to rank those pages very well. Now, writing city pages and having city pages on your website, very important, a very easy way to start to get rankings. Uh, but it has to be unique content. It has to be written specifically for that location. Maybe you could mention a landmark in that particular area, a park, uh, what it's known for, maybe a, a college or some, you know, something in that area, uh, and then write content around that, obviously around your particular um, services as well. You should have some mention some of your services in there that we have done. We have installed awnings in Chesterfield, you know, things like that as you're writing these out. But definitely don't try to take one thing and then just replicate it by changing different words. Every page really needs to be unique. Now, number two, too many irrelevant or low quality links pointing back to your website can hurt you. This was what we called the penguin update. And one thing prior to this coming out was Google used how many links were coming to your website as their main uh, way to see where they wanted to rank you. So the guy with the most links typically ranked number one. And that's what it used to be about. When they released this update, what it really started to address was the quality of the links that were coming back to you. So a link from something like um, the WCAA, right? Or the uh, the uh, uh, Window Fashion Magazine, something like that. That link coming from that uh, authoritative site back to yours would be worth more than getting a link on uh, awningsorus.com or something like that, right? Just some, some site that's just thrown together uh, or even something like Craigslist, you know, putting out Craigslist ads or something like that would be very low quality link because it's not terribly relevant. So the more relevant the link is, the more authority that the other website has, that actually kind of pushes your authority up as well. So having quality and relevant links is definitely going to be more, uh, more important than just quantity of links. It's very important that you diversify what we call your anchor text. And an anchor text could be 
uh, when you're when you're visiting a website, you might see click here, right? And that is the link. Google expects some of those links that are coming to you to be that kind of generic click here, see website, that kind of stuff. But they also expect to see um, specific words like window treatments, New Jersey. And that is the link that is pointing back to you if you're in, in that particular area, then that they make that association. That link has those words and it must be about this website. So, so that website goes up. Now, one thing you can do to find your links and to kind of get started with uh, figuring out what links you have is to go to Google Search Console. And that is at google.com slash webmasters. Oops. And if you haven't claimed your business, you need to do this. Uh, google.com slash webmasters will get you there. First time in, it's going to tell you how to get started. Uh, but once you're in there, then it will start to give you a lot of information about your website. How much, how many times people are looking for your website versus how many times people actually clicked on your website. It also gives you information like how many pages they think your website has and how many of those pages have errors or problems where they couldn't uh, maybe um, index that page for some reason, right? So it gives you some really good information, different information than what you would get in something like Google Analytics. Google Analytics is all about visitors to your website. Google Search Console is more about how Google sees your website from a health standpoint, if that makes sense. So having this set up on your site or, or for your website, very important. The first time you go in here, it's gonna ask you to um, verify your domain name. Uh, typically you use, you know, wherever you got your domain name, whether that was through Google dom Domains or GoDaddy or Network Solutions, some of those kind of sites. But once you verify that, then you can start to see this information. Now, what we're talking about today is links. So there is actually a button over here on the left for links that you can actually click on and see where your links are coming from, the top pages that are linked, uh, what pages in order, how many links you have to those pages, what sites are linking to you and sending you traffic, uh, and then top linking text. So what kind of text um, people are using when they link to you. So in this case, for our website, Window Treatment Marketing Pros, that makes sense that people would use that as our brand name and send people to our website that way. Also visit website, as I mentioned earlier, the click here, the visit website, the go, those kind of generic search, uh, those kind of generic anchor texts are also important. Uh, and then of course, the domain name itself can also be uh, a good way to get links back to your site. So I definitely encourage you to check out uh, Google Search Console. If you haven't signed up for that, definitely get signed up for that. Uh, but as far as finding links, that's a good place to start. Get in there, click on that, see what links are coming in. And then, you know, another really cool thing you can do is there are other websites out there that show links to other uh, domains. And it, you know, if you're getting a little bit more technical, but you could actually look at some of your competitors, see where they're getting links from and then go get those same links uh, so that you are getting those same authority links, whether they're on some sort of a business directory, things like that in your area that maybe you didn't know about. Getting those links, very important. And again, in Google Search Console over on the left, there's actually a button for links there. And I'm pretty sure you can export that list as well to uh, like Google, uh, sorry, Excel or Google Sheets, something like that. All right, step number three, you need a real physical office if you wanna rank well in Google Maps. So the Pigeon update was all around Google Maps and we are seeing Google Maps becoming a major part of uh, window treatment and awning companies getting leads and any home services uh, kind of business getting leads. Like I said earlier, 60 to 70% of all traffic comes from, or, or sorry, search traffic is from a mobile device. So having a mobile friendly website, having your Google um, Maps listing optimized is very, very important. Uh, you need to have obviously an address in the city that you're wanting to rank in. That's pretty easy. Um, and one of the things that, that Google really took into account was fake addresses, UPS stores, 
uh, those kind of places where you can kind of get a, a street address even though you don't have one. Um, and um, people that were working from home, but they were hiding their business listing or they were ad hiding their address on Google My Business. Now, in a lot of cases, a question will come up and they'll say, well, I work from home. I don't really want my address listed on there. I would recommend that you um, just kind of get over that fact. Uh, people are understandable, especially in the last year and a half that people are working from home. Uh, I've had my listing, I work from home and I have for, for well over 12 years now. I've had one person actually show up at my home. Uh, but it gets me a real address in the city that I'm wanting to rank for. So I don't think it's a huge issue. Uh, and I don't think people are going to come show up at your door, uh, but it's definitely something that you have to consider. Now, another option could be obviously getting an actual retail uh, type store, a, a storefront of some sort. Uh, there are some kind of sort of ways around this where you could uh, rent um, a co-working space. Uh, co-working spaces give you real uh, addresses, they have, you know, typically they have a receptionist, somebody at the front that actually takes the mail and sorts that out. Uh, so those are, those are other options. And some of the co-working spaces can be pretty, uh, pretty, pretty reasonable um, as far as uh, cost, but you need a real business, you need a real physical business uh, address. Any questions about the three major things that have happened? You guys are a quiet group today. All right, all right, well, let's, let's press on. Uh, a couple other things that have changed. Uh, old fashioned SEO, no longer effective. As I mentioned, Google's pretty smart now about some of these things that used to work in the past. Uh, there really aren't that many shortcuts left, if any. Uh, but going forward, the big push now is towards user experience optimization and searcher intent. So uh, Google's starting to understand relationships of words. They're starting to understand the difference between uh, how people search. So if somebody's searching for cheap window treatments and <laughs> it looks like on your website from everything that Google's looking up that you are more of a high end uh, place, they might not show your listing. So they're understanding searcher intent in that way. They're also understanding searcher intent when somebody types in awning companies near me. So they're looking at the physical location of where that person is when they're typing that in, using the map system and giving you relevant local results, uh, which is pretty interesting, uh, but definitely a heavier focus on this end of things. Now, a couple things that might be interesting to you, uh, click through rate or how many people see your website as one of the listings in Google and how many actually click on that listing. So just because you're, you show up as one of the 10 uh, in a Google search doesn't necessarily mean that people are going to click on your particular result. But Google does watch that click through rate or how many of those people actually do that. Uh, mobile responsiveness, we talked about that. Uh, time on page is interesting. So how long people spend on your website once they get there? Are they spending five, 10 seconds and clicking the back button because it wasn't relevant? Or are they spending a minute or two? Uh, what are they doing you know, during that time? Are they looking at multiple pages? Things like that. Bounce rate again is somebody coming to your website, clicking the back button in a very short amount of time. Uh, so bounce rate, you obviously wanna keep as low as possible. Uh, which goes all the way back to writing better content. If you write better content, produce better content on your site, Google's going to know more about your website and about your company. And they're going to serve those results up to the people that they think are most relevant, which will in turn lower the bounce rate. The last one is the number of citations. So a citation is a mention of your business around the web. Now, Notice I didn't say a link from another website pointing back to yours. It's just a mention of your business. So it could be that there is a business directory out there for your particular city, but maybe they don't let you put a link back to your website in that uh, business directory. So it's still relevant because you're a business in such and such town, 
Uh, and Google is now smart enough to realize, oh, this is the same business. They're, they're in the same place. And Google can actually count that as a link for your business, which is very interesting. That all comes down to having the, um, your name, address, and phone number always the same on every business listing or citation, as we call it, around the web. And we call that the NAP, uh, name, address, phone. Those three things are critically important down to the point that if you're 123 Main Street, uh, that you always put your address 123 Main ST, or if you want to spell out the word street, that you always spell out the word street. So they understand, you know, they, they see the difference between ST and street, and they're looking for one specific version of that. Uh, if you have a, um, if you have a, a, a suite number, suite 500 or something, make sure that that's always listed in there as well, those sorts of things. Also reviews, and uh, as I mentioned, relevant links pointing back to you, but reviews are a big part of driving, especially the Google Maps portion. Now, all of these things and a lot more I talk about in the book. I mentioned my book earlier, and I'm going to tell you a little bit later how you can get a free copy of this if you don't have one yet. Uh, but we go through all of these in a little bit more detail in there. So when it comes to the new SEO formula, there's a couple things that you need to do. First of all, figure out what the most important keywords are based on your service, your area, and the search volume. We looked at that a little bit. Obviously, window treatments or awnings you know, is, is a huge one, but there are a lot of other potential keywords people could type in as well. Uh, there's a couple tools that you could use for this. Obviously, the Ahrefs one that I use, but that's a paid tool. Uh, but there is the Google keyword tool that's available. Uh, there's also Ubersuggest, ubersuggest.com. Uh, and also, uh, I'm going to give you a swipe file at the end today uh, of a list of the top keywords that you can use as well. Next, build a great website with unique pages that are targeting each keyword individually. So over time, what you want to do is you want to pick out a really good keyword that's going to send some traffic to you. And a good place might be to start with a city. So window treatments, uh, Kirkwood or whatever, right? And then build a page specifically around that, publish that page on your website, and then start to track that particular keyword and see how many uh, people start coming to that, you know, if you can get it to page one. But creating that uh, great website is the first piece of that. Optimizing those each page for individual keywords is a big part of that as well. Optimize your website for user experience and intent. And I put in parentheses, think personas. So I've talked about personas in other trainings as well. But if you could look at your perfect client, or maybe you, had, you pick your top five favorite clients that you worked with, they paid on time or they paid early, uh, they didn't give you any hassle, they were happy with the result, um, easy to deal with. You know, those kind of people have certain traits that you'll find out that are all the same. And what you can do is start to build a persona around that type of person or that type of customer that I want to deal with. And then what you can do is start to create content on your site that talks to that person. So that is, you know, that really starts to help you separate yourself and it helps people that maybe don't fit uh, what you that you want to deal with, uh, they'll kind of start to disqualify themselves as they read through your content. Uh, so kind of interesting, but definitely uh, important to to build a persona, build something out that is this is the kind of person that I want to deal with, and then write content related as if you are speaking to that particular person or persona, and make it easy. Oh, I put make is, make it easy uh, for people to do business with you. So some things we do along this is make sure that you have your calls to action on your website. There's a set appointment button that's easy to find. Your phone number is easy to find. Uh, we, are, we are implementing chat features for all of our clients now, uh, which engages texting, things like that. So some, some real forward thinking things, but make it easy for people to do business with you in multiple ways. Some people want to pick up the phone and just ask some questions. Uh, my wife would be happy never 
to pick up the phone and talk to a real person if she could pull up a chat window, something like that. So different people, different personalities, different ways of doing business. So make sure that you have all of those available. And of course, optimize your website for SEO uh, on your website. And then there are things that you can do on other websites to increase your overall authority as well. And then the last piece, obviously, track your results, which we'll talk a little bit more about as well today. So keywords, some window treatment keywords that, that uh, are very important. Obviously, window treatments, window coverings. Uh, if you do repair, then it might be shutter repair, curtain repair, drapery, draper, draper, drapery installation, uh, commercial. If you're doing commercial, don't forget about those. Uh, and you can get the entire list at wtmarketingpros.com slash keywords. There's also a list for awnings out there as well. Uh, but make sure you get those. And then number two, make sure that you're tracking the keywords that you are running uh, content around. So, you know, write a really good piece of content and then make sure that you have some sort of tool that is tracking where you're ranking in Google for those different phrases. Obviously your brand is one of those, but if somebody knows your brand, most likely they're typing that in to find your phone number to pick up the phone and call you, right? Uh, the real money and the real leads are in some of these deeper, what they call long tail keywords, uh, where people don't, maybe they're not familiar with your particular company, but they know that uh, whatever they type in, the companies that come up are probably the, the most authoritative uh, companies. Now, when it comes to off-page SEO or things you can do on other websites, Again, think user experience. Don't forget about that. Uh, you know, years ago, we would, Google would come out and say, you need to have this and everybody would just do this, whatever it was. Uh, didn't matter how humans interacted with it, if it was inconvenient, things like that. And what we found over time is that if there's not a good user experience as part of it, people are gonna click the back button. They're not gonna hang around no matter how optimized your website is. So you definitely need to have both in place. A page for each service, each product, each city. Uh, and as a little bonus, we tend to put a little map of that particular city uh, on each of those city pages. And that sends an additional signal back to Google because we're using Google Maps as an Im uh, embedded map on that page. Uh, and then of course, unique content around that. Um, when it comes to SEO and some kind of nerdy stuff, you wanna have keyword that you're, that you're targeting in the title, in your heading tags, um, and a meta description or a description of that particular page that encourages people to click on your result. I've also mentioned the NAP or the name, address, phone number. That should be in the footer of your page, and it should always be the same when, when you're doing this on other websites. Make sure that that is always the, the case. And uh, make sure you're blogging, make sure that there's some sort of content going on where you're consistently updating your website. So I grabbed a quick sc screenshot of this company, uh, Sunshine Drapery, and a couple things that, that you'll see here. Top right, you've got the phone number. You've got a bright orange schedule appointment button. Uh, these things are huge. Obviously top left is a logo. When you click on the logo, it goes to uh, the homepage. All the way at the top, there's a contact us, there's locations. Everything is easy to find even before you start scrolling. It's very important to have all of these different pieces in place uh, on your website. And these are called conversion factors. Now, the results of that is exactly what you expect it to be. They're in the map section for major searches that they want to rank for. They also rank number one. And in this case, their product page actually ranks as well. This is pretty cool. So what happened here was their product page was optimized so well for, for a similar phrase that Google listed them twice in the organic results. And what that did is that pushed one of their competitors off page one, right? Because they got that additional listing. And I've seen cases where Google will show two and even three listings from the same company of internal pages that are also ranking very well. Doesn't always happen, but definitely uh, something that can happen. So some to-dos uh, that will influence your ranking that you can take care of. 
uh, claim and optimize your Google My Business listing. That's google.com slash business. Make sure that you've claimed that listing and that you've optimized it. And I have some training on that at wtmarketingpros.com slash training, specifically on the Google My Business uh, area and how to optimize that. Get a lot of citations. And even though this is kind of mentioned uh, in, in short here, this is a big deal. Uh, and this is a big piece of your ongoing SEO efforts is to start to get those mentions of your business around the web. Not an easy process to do, but definitely a, a worthwhile process. Uh, build up your online reviews. Uh, use a tool like Lead Boomerang, which is what we use for our clients. Uh, something that starts to, you can put in your, um, your clients that you did installs this past week, and it asks them to uh, leave a review on Google or Facebook or Yelp or some of those kind of sites. Uh, but definitely leverage some of those tools to get those reviews up. That's a big piece of getting into that map three pack. Bill authoritative links back to your website from other websites. Again, uh, kind of mentioned in passing, but a huge piece of this is getting those links back from other websites. Not Again, not an easy task to do, and it takes time building relationships with other websites, uh, finding business directories, things of that sort, and getting those links back to your website. So when it comes to getting to the top of uh, the Google Map system or Google My Business, uh, it all comes down to citations and reviews. Again, getting those mentions on other websites that point back to yours, uh, and you know, you know some of the, some of the big ones: uh, Facebook, YouTube, um, um, Yahoo Local, another pretty big one. Uh, Hows could be a good one, and then getting reviews. Uh, specifically on these, these trusted platforms like Google, um, Facebook, Yelp, House, some of the ones that are really trusted and having those reviews um, natural looking. So one thing that we like to do is not send everybody uh, when, when a new client comes on, say, hey, give us a list of the last 20 installs you've done and sending all of those out at once and suddenly getting... With, well, if we send out 20, let's say we might get five reviews, but having them all pile up at the same time doesn't look natural, right? So it's important that you're doing this on a weekly basis, like every Friday, for instance, uh, going through the list of installs from the past week and plugging those into a system like Lead Boomerang and getting those review requests out there. And then maybe asking them to review you on a couple different pro uh, properties, Facebook, Google, Yelp, House different services so that it looks very natural to um, to Google and it doesn't look like, you know, all of a sudden you got five reviews all within a couple hours of each other. For this particular client, you can see all the different ways that they could get links and reviews pointing back to their site, including some vendors, uh, different uh, sites like City Search, which is a, a business directory type site. Uh, of course, Yelp and House uh, organizations. If you're in any organizations, those would work as well. Very important. And then make sure that you're tracking those links in some sort of a system. Like I showed you earlier with Google, um, Search Console is a great way to do it. And it'll start to tell you where those links are and where they're pointing to. So you don't always want everybody to point to your homepage. Uh, if you're listing your website, on, um, we'll use Kirkwood as an example. Uh, if you're listing your website on the Kirkwood business directory, you would probably want to actually link to your Kirkwood city page and not your homepage, right? Because it's more relevant. It's a more relevant page. So having what we call those deep links tend to work better versus just every link pointing to your homepage, which is what everybody thinks is the most important, not necessarily true. Over time, what actually happens in most cases for our clients is they tend not to uh, have their homepage as their number one uh, trafficked page because they're writing good content that the homepage might actually be the third or fourth most trafficked page on their site. Sure, people might click on it as part of their, their journey, but if somebody's typing in um, draperies, Kirkwood, you want them to land on the page that's about draperies in Kirkwood, right? You want them to land on those internal pages because it's it's more relevant. You don't want them to land on your homepage and then have to go find that product or that service or that city page 
uh, to see if you can do business, you know, do business with them. Uh, so having those internal pages and product pages that are very relevant, much more important and much more impactful. So when we look at this, what do these things all have in common? Uh, some things uh, that stick out to me, obviously claim and verified listing, uh, no spam in the company name. This I'm seeing more and more uh, businesses that are adding themselves to Google My Business and they're adding in words that are not in their business name. So Joe's Windows, you know, maybe that's the name of the company, but Joe puts Joe's Windows, window treatments, covering, shutters, shades, blinds, and awnings, right? That's not the actual business name. And what can happen is you can get kicked out of Google for that. You can get send warnings. Uh, competitors could flag that listing as well. So having uh, no spam in the company name, just use the company name as it is. Uh, get those reviews. That's a big piece of it. And then when it comes to your title tags down near the bottom, make sure that you're kind of vary, varying them a little bit, again, for those specific pages. Um, a lot of citations pointing back to your site and what we call a, a solid link profile. Now, when it comes to tracking all of these things, very important, if you're gonna go through all this work and get all these pages optimized, it'd be nice to know if it's working, right? Uh, so there are a couple of tools for that. First of all, Google Analytics, uh, analytics.google.com. If you're not using Google Analytics, I highly recommend you get that uh, as soon as possible so you can start to see where people are coming from, how they're interacting with your website. There's a lot of data back there. And I have a training specifically on this as well. Also Google Search Console, which I mentioned earlier. Make sure that you are looking at that and seeing the health of your website. That's at google.com slash webmasters. Sign up for that. And then use some sort of keyword tracking tool so that you can see all the work you're doing and, and how it is increasing in position in Google and therefore traffic to your website, which is obviously important. That's the end goal here is to get uh, those, those visits. And don't forget about call tracking. Uh, we implement this for all of our clients, a specific phone number that only goes on your website uh, or only in your Google My Business listing. And that phone number forwards to your regular line, but now you can track every single time somebody picks up and dials that phone number. You know that that lead originated from your website or from your Google My Business listing. So very important to have call tracking in place as well. Here's an example of a, a call tracking report, who called, what source they called from, the phone number that they called, and in this case, whether you answered or uh, whether the, the uh, uh, business answered or not, things like that, how long it was. This information can be very important uh, you know, to, to see how many phone calls did we get, how many leads of those did we get, how many leads did we close, what's our conversion rate. Uh, those sorts of things. And this is, again, this, this particular screenshot is from the lead boomerang tool as well. So the new SEO formula, set up a great website with pages for each service, product, city, municipality, uh, get those keywords into those relevant, important spots. Uh, don't forget about the geo modifier, which is city location. Uh, having your main city in some of those titles so that Google knows where you're at, what your website is about, location, uh, unique content. We went over that. Uh, leverage multimedia. So one thing you can do is if you do uh, feel comfortable doing video, perhaps, uh, put some videos on your site. Some, uh, some manufacturers, some vendors give videos that you can use for your website. People coming to your website and watching a video means longer page time on page, right? Because they're watching a minute and a half long video. They're spending that time on your page. They're not clicking the back button and bouncing. So it can improve your time on page just by having something like video or a podcast or something out there. Make sure you're getting those reviews. Make sure your citations are consistent. Uh, your name, address, phone number is always the same. Uh, keep consistent with content. Uh, if you're if you're comfortable doing one piece of content a month, then do it every month. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is say, you know what, I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy and write a piece of content every week for my website, and then you start to do that, and then you know eight ten weeks later you're like 
I just don't have time to do this anymore. I can't keep up with it. It's wearing me out. And then all of a sudden you go back to one piece of content a month, right? It would be better just to go ahead and start slow. If you feel like you can ramp up, then ramp up uh, that way. It's a better uh, signal that you're sending to Google in that particular way. Build links back to your site and then leverage paid search to, uh, to improve or supplement a, a very strong SEO presence. So when it comes to these different um, uh, pieces of the formula, what kind of questions do you have? Unmute yourself and uh, let me know what questions you have about anything that I've covered today. Or you can place something in the chat if you'd rather. No question, nobody has any questions. We only have one um, store. Okay. So um, all of my Hunter, I'm a Hunter Douglas dealer. So then I would need to just basically promote it that way, right? Right. So you have a you have a physical location. Yes. In a major city, I'm assuming. Well, I wouldn't call it major. We're kind of rural. Okay. Okay. Uh, but I would definitely, you know, pick out wherever, obviously your, your main location, but if yes. there is a, if there's a nearby city that's within, you know, short amount of distance, maybe 30, 45 minutes, something like that. Like you, Carbondale. Yeah. You could put in uh, that, you know, like Carbondale, you could put in some pages that had content around that. If you're willing to drive there and willing to get um, business in that area, mm -hmm. and I would definitely build a page uh, specifically for that area as well. Okay. From a map standpoint, people are people are going to find you only by your physical location. So, uh, so that's what I probably just need to do: do the surrounding towns. Yep. And tell them where I am, and see if that doesn't bring some hits from right. that. Right. And then, do you do like free in-home consultations? Those sort we of do. things. Yeah. Yeah. So that will help as well because then you can peak create content around carbon data right. or something and you know because you'll drive there right, right. so it's and not we'll drive there we'll measure for no yeah. charge right bring the samples to their home or they can come here whichever right yeah so definitely worth uh, building some content around those those larger areas those larger municipalities because there's more people more potential customers for you okay good question okay Anyone else? Uh, Gary said, all very informative. You covered a lot. Thank you. I'm going back through the chats as well. Make sure I don't miss anything. Uh, Maria said, what happened if I have two locations? So two locations is a better scenario, right? Because you can rank for two different places. So in that case, what you would probably want to do is have a locations page on your website. Uh, let me switch over here and show you, uh, I'll show you Sunshine. So this is a, a company in the St. Louis, Missouri area, mm -hmm. and they have multiple locations. Uh, so we actually have a locations button at the top that goes to Sunshine Drapery slash locations. And then on that page, we have links to each of their locations, including their, their headquarter office. Uh, but each of these location pages have their own uh, page as well on the website. So now we'll see it's locations slash Chesterfield store. Mm -hmm. And this is a specific page about this location along with an embedded map of where that location is, the business hours, everything related. In this case, we even have a, a tour of the store uh, for that particular location. Then we do the same thing for other locations as well. Well, sorry, it's Maria. Yeah. Um, thank you. But um, I work out of my home. I have two homes in New Jersey. So okay. one South Jersey, one North Jersey. So sure. I don't want my address listed. So that's, so in, in Google, I have two Google business accounts. Yep. To do that. But for my website, I'm like a little lost. Okay. You don't want to have locations on your website. I don't want to have the street address. I don't mind the t two towns, but I don't yep. want street addresses, obviously. Yep. Because they're my yep. homes. 
Okay. Um, so Google My Business is going to make you pick an address, uh, but they do give an option that we we uh, we go to your location, you know, uh, that kind of thing. There is a checkbox in there. I can't remember exactly the the way that it's worded, uh, but you know, we service at at your location, something like that. So you can check that box, put in the physical addresses, and then tell Google not to show that address. Um, and then another thing that you can do is uh, there's something called schema, and I don't want to get too technical, um, but you can behind the scenes in the code, have your web person actually add in some additional, uh, what we call schema or script here that tells Google what the location of uh, your business is. Uh, and I just did one this morning. Uh, let me show you this and I'll give you an example. Uh, oh, you know what? This isn't going to work because uh, I used the tag manager. Uh, so you won't be able to see it there. But uh, look up um, schema. Are you on a WordPress type website? Uh, Squarespace. On Squarespace. Okay. I'm not I'm not sure if Square, Squarespace will let you use uh, local schema code. Uh, code. But there is uh, in, in Google, you can actually look this up, local business structure data, and they will actually help you build this data out uh, or, or give this to your web person, right? And say, please build this for our location. And then what it does is it puts code behind the scenes that tells Google, here, this is our location, this is our city, this is our phone number, this is our hours. You can put a bunch of stuff back there. Um, so I would definitely look into that. As a, as a way to kind of sort of get around what you're trying to do. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, Rory said, I enjoyed, I enjoyed the seminar, Will. Thanks. I've, I think all my questions have been answered. Uh, awesome. Uh, Jamie looked out the window and saw runner, <laughs> water running down my driveway. Oh my gosh, uh, this is crazy. Uh, and Gary said, hi, Rory. So, all right, cool. Well, uh, if there are no other questions, I appreciate your time today. Let's let's get to some freebies here. Uh, I got a couple things. Obviously, I mentioned the book earlier. Uh, if you don't have a copy of my book, got one right here, uh, Triple Your Window Treatment and Awning Leads, go ahead and go to wtmarketingpros.com slash book. You can fill out that form. I'll get one in the mail to you. Uh, if you want one immediately, you can, uh, well, not immediately, but quicker than me mailing it, you can buy it on Amazon if you want. Uh, I did mention keywords earlier, wtmarketingpros.com slash keywords will get you awning keywords and window treatment keywords, uh, the top ones that people are using and uh, the, the ones similar to what we saw on that Ahrefs tool. Lastly, uh, if you want to kind of know what your website health is from an SEO standpoint, uh, we just launched this new tool about two weeks ago. Uh, it's a free SEO report. And all you do is put in your website and it grinds away for five or 10 minutes. And then it emails you uh, a list of all the different things that we talked about today, your links, your website authority, your SEO, uh, social networks, and how those are interacting with your website. Uh, so you can get all that at wtmarketingpros.com slash report. Again, absolutely free. And like I said, it checks a lot of different pieces uh, of this as well. Uh, all right, we got another question, Jeff. Should we put the city name in keywords or does Google know that window treatments are local and it isn't necessary? Definitely put the city name in there. Um, the the big city, if you are near a city, put that in there because that's going to drive the most traffic, the most uh, customers. And then, yes, on these uh, internal pages, uh, I would definitely mention city names throughout some of those as well. You obviously don't want to spam it. You don't want to put your city name in there a hundred times, uh, but you definitely want to mention it throughout your content where you're located. If you're interested in uh, learning more about our business, uh, Window Treatment Marketing Pros, uh, give me a call, 314-470-1180. You can go to wtmarketingpros.com slash strategy, set up a free 15-minute call, get on my calendar. We can talk about uh, what you're doing now, what your goals are for the year, and uh, what, you're, what you're hoping to accomplish. 
So uh, I do appreciate everybody attending today. I hope that you were able to learn something good and I appreciate your time. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.